Hello, friends, and welcome to this special edition of the Where Peter Is podcast. I am Mike Lewis, the managing editor of the website wherepeteris.com, and I am joined by two of our veteran, from the beginning contributors, Pedro and Claire. Pedro and Claire just returned from World Youth Day, which ended a week and a day ago. Uh, it was in Pedro's home country of Lisbon and Claire's adopted country as she is now uh, married to Pedro. So we, we were able to watch this relationship blossom through where Peter is. Um, I just thought it would be a, a good opportunity to, to talk to both of them who are on the ground, who uh, they were spending time observing what was going on. And they were also participating in the prayers and in the celebration and the catechesis and taking part in the crowd as well. So I think uh, this would be very helpful for anyone who wants to listen to it. Um, thank you, Claire and Pedro, for, for joining me today. Hello, thank you for having us. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. so we'll just go right into the questions. I don't wanna go over long. I know I have a tendency to do that. So um, why don't I start with a question for Claire? So my mm -hmm. first question is, now, Claire, as a native of the Philippines, I remember you telling me that you took part in the planning of the 2015 papal visit, um, which I think was one of the biggest papal masses of all time, and the weather was uh, was terrible, but it was a very successful visit. Um, was this your fir first World Youth Day? Um, no, actually, my first World Youth Day was in 2011 in Spain, Madrid, Spain. Oh, wow. But okay. I... Yeah, but in terms of coverage, the papal visit, uh, it was my first time to cover. So here oh. for this World Youth Day, it's actually my second time to cover. The oh, World. wow. Okay. And um, and Pedro, I know that you were at the World Youth Day in 2013 in Rio. I remember you mentioned that. I was that. in Is Rio. Yeah, I was in Rio and then in Krakow. Okay. I was you in the Grains of Sands in Copacabana Beach. That's, yeah. <laughs> And, and you missed uh, the 2011 World Youth Day then, even it, the hop, skip, and a jump away on the same peninsula. You, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, at that time, I was still not very keen on World Youth Day. No. Oh, okay. Uh, so, Rio was my first one. In oh, fact, wow. it was in retrospect that I thought, oh, I missed it, so I need, need to go to the next one. <laughs> Good choice. I've been, you know, the one that I should have gone to was 2002 in Toronto. Since then, there hasn't really, I mean, I guess Panama may have been doable, but it was in February. It was a weird time of year. Um, but this, but, you know, now I've, I've sort of eclipsed the window of, of youth, but I hope that, uh, you know, my children are able to participate. My oldest is 16. I don't know if Seoul in 2027 is the, is the best way to start because it's so far away, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I, I, I... We, we vividly recommend it's, uh, it's uh, an experience that is undescribable. Uh, only if you have, uh, only if you have gone through that experience, yeah. are you able to really, to really understand what World Youth Day is all about. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's a, it's a wonderful experience and it it helps um, mold your mold you into your adulthood, your vocation. Uh, it's impressive. It's really geared towards helping the young people become adults and adults in the faith. And I think that God God helps a, a lot in that. <laughs> we feel God uh, driving us uh, towards what He wants us to be. I'm. I'm going to ask you a little bit about your personal experiences as pilgrims uh, in a little bit. But my first question, or my next question, which uh, goes back to what Claire said earlier. So you, both of you went as members of the press corps this time. Mm -hmm. um, you were able to obtain credentials through where Peter is. Both of you have your joint project, The City and the World, which is a journalism uh, project that was initiated by the two of you. Um, and you were able to go to press conferences, write stories, wear the press badge. Um, can you talk a, a lot of people, obviously out of the people who go to World Youth Day, only a very small number are those that are able to actually uh, participate in the press conferences and the 
I guess, the media coverage side of it. Maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about that experience. So, you go first. Yes, you go first. So, in my experience, um, unlike uh, whereas a pilgrim, you have uh, you have little, uh, you know, access to information. Whereas, where if you're a member of the press corps, you got the uh, primary resources to access the actual, uh, for example, figures of how many, uh, for example, booths, how many people attended. So those were the exact thing that uh, I would say that uh, made for me. Um, it's easy for me to. Uh, getting access information so that I could report more rather than a pilgrim. But of course, um, I also enjoy being a pilgrim because you're there, you experience, you, you don't work. Here we work, but yeah. at least we get the information. So that's it. So and you were able to us. attend mass and, and be a part of the crowd and, and you know. Yeah, yeah, it's quite different. But of course, for me, it's just as enjoyable whether you're a pilgrim or whether you're a uh, part of the media corps. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, we're actually both, but more on the media corps. But yeah, I enjoyed mm -hmm. it very much. And and Pedro, I, I know because Claire was actually sending me pictures while you were there of you standing there talking to Austin Ivory. And I know that you were quoted in uh, an article by uh, Brian Fraga from National Catholic Reporter. You appeared on Portuguese television, even. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk a little bit about the the media pool? I mean, it, it, I, one of the things. So I took a trip to Rome last spring, and uh, one of the one of the cool experiences for me was being able to actually meet some of the people in person who I had corresponded online only with, or. Um, meet some of the people that I admired, like our friend Rodrigo Guerra. Um, what what kind of encounters did you have in the media core? Did you uh, make new connections? What did they say about where Peter is? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. No, uh, yes, uh, completing on what Claire said, it's a completely different perspective to be on the media, okay? When you're a pilgrim, you are having the experience you don't have the an idea of what goes in of all the bustle that goes in the back and the backstage okay so now we had access to the, that backstage as observers that's what we were as uh, me members of the press corps uh, so it's good to even though we are not experiencing it uh, in as pilgrims uh, and sincerely I, I prefer it as a pilgrim but now I think it's a time for me to retribute and help the pilgrims have that experience by doing my part on the backstage. And precisely on backstage, there was lots of activity. We were at the press center where we had access to the press conferences, to the information uh, right on time. And of course, Austin Ivory was there, Brian Fraga was there. So we were able to establish connections. I had already met Austin, um, before in person, but it was good to meet him again. And Brian Fraggett was the first time that I actually met him in person. Uh, yeah, and of course we had some people who came to us and they were, uh, they said, oh, I've, <laughs> you're from where Peter is. I'm, uh, I, like your, I like your work very much. That's very rewarding. And yeah, I got to, the opportunity to appear on Portuguese uh, and also Brazilian uh, TV for the first time, <laughs> so that was that was also uh, uh, a different a different experience. Uh, a person, it's different to see it on the television and to be on the other side. Uh, all the preparation that goes into it, um, yeah. Uh, but it was it was very enjoyable. I love talk, uh, sharing what I've learned about Pope Francis and about the Catholicism, previous World Youth Day. So yeah, uh, it was also a very enjoyable experience, also very work intensive. But <laughs> of course, as pilgrims, it's also very work intensive. Don't, don't think, oh, uh, as pilgrims, you go there and you end up your day completely exhausted. <laughs> so it's just a different kind of tiredness. And I think one of the things that uh, probably 
benefited uh, both of you from being there is uh, it, it's funny because, you know, one of you is from Asia, one of you is from Europe, um, both speak multiple languages, and you write for this Anglo-centric, Amer US-centric, for lack of my apologies, but an international, uh, for an international audience that focuses on some of the controversies that are centered in the US that tend to drift into other countries. So I think... Um, it was almost, I, I want to say it was almost providential, if not, it was providential that World Youth Day landed in your home country after you've been doing this work for so long, after you've uh, written now two books. Uh, I guess one is is coming out soon and we can plug it at the end. But um, just that, you, that your experience, that the discussions that you've been able to have with um, the other Where Peter is contributors, with each other, with with people in the media, with people throughout the church, I think that that has really benefited. And and another thing is your language skills. Um, obviously, Pedro, you were able to do the translations of a lot, and not all of the, not everything you attended was in English. And Portuguese is the is the language in um, Portugal. Portugal. So you, <laughs> 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 surprise, surprise. So so you were able to act as translator for. Um, you know, for, for the benefit of the Where Peter Is and the City and the World audience. And and uh, Claire, how's your Portuguese coming along? I'm just curious. Well, it's just okay. <laughs> I think I could uh, mais ou menos. It's more or less. More or less. Yes, yeah, sort less. of. <laughs> mais ou menos. <laughs> it's Portuguese more or less. It's, if it's somebody fine. dropped you in the middle of Porto, you might be able to, uh, or Braga, you might be able to find your way to the bus station. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. She already does. So. Oh, yeah. And and restaurants, you can order right in. Uh, yes, in yes, yes, yes. Because my brother, when he lived in Rome for for three year, three or four years, he 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 was fluent in restaurants, and he couldn't speak a word of Italian anywhere else. So oh, okay. he had his priorities straight. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> so the, it, it's interesting because I think some of the things that that some of the controversies in the lead up. To, to uh, World Youth Day did not really materialize in the way that certain people feared and certain people anticipated. One of the one of the issues was um, catechesis, obviously based on that mis misquote or or uh, misinterpretation of Cardinal elect Cardinal elect Aguiar's um, his uh, his quote about. We're not trying to convert people in the context of interreligious dialogue. Um, some pundits were saying, "Oh, why isn't there evangelization?" When he never said we don't we don't want to evangelize. He just said we aren't trying to. It was the proselytism versus the evangelization thing. Um, but also, catechesis is very important, especially for young people. You attended. I know you wrote about at least one catechesis session. I don't know how many you attended or what your impression was overall or what you heard about them, but maybe you can share a little bit. Maybe we'll start with Claire talking about uh, the catechesis. So um, I told Pedro that we should attend the one nearest to us. So he got the uh, WID app downloaded to his phone. And when you search if you, of course, you just put your place and then the nearest one, uh, you will see immediately which is the nearest one. And it happened to be uh, Bishop McElroy's. Um, we didn't choose. We didn't choose. So it was randomly. It was obvious. providential as well. It was so. the one from Cardinal McElroy, indeed. Yeah. So and we Bishop named Soto, it. right, from Sacramento, California? Or what? Bishop, Bishop Jaime Soto? Yeah. Yes, one. yes, yes. He was also there. It was two. Uh, so, of course, uh, we didn't choose uh, in uh, in Korean or Ukrainian. There were other languages. We chose the, the nearest to us in a language that we would understand, which was English. Uh, and it, that was it. And the catechesis was profoundly Christocentric. We also interviewed some youth who showed that what transpired uh to them was profoundly uh, christocentric yeah. they were we were surprised by the maturity of, of, the, of their answers these are not uh you know young people who do not know their their faith these are see, pe yeah. people who know 
when you ask them, they would say uh, the problem is secularization. And they even say that they were very happy that they have access to to the bishops, to the cardinals. I mean, seeing them um, giving catechism towards them is just uh, it's just amazing for them. Um, through World Youth Day, it's easy. It's like for them, it's, you can access them everywhere you go. That's yes, what each catechesis say. had at least one bishop oh, and wow. many languages. Many languages. Many languages, many sessions. I was scrolling down the app to count them, and at the, at the certain moment, I, I, gave, I gave up. I just went to the <laughs> official stats because I could not count them anymore. So many. And throughout three days, three days, each day, uh, an amount of those catechesis. Uh, so wow. that was extreme. Of course, there's evangelization. I, I can't even fathom how a person can actually be there and not see how profoundly Catholic the whole event is. Mm -hmm. You cannot say that. Uh, you cannot say that it has. It is secularized. It's not. Or that it's just a, a festival that young people go there to just be. No, no, there's catechesis, there's veneration of relics, there's adoration, Eucharistic adoration, there's so many Catholic activities. And I remember when I was a pilgrim, uh, in the, we were in the bus, we were praying the rosary. So this is not just a festival, it is a profoundly religious experience, Catholic religious experience so the image that come that, that people try to paint of it is completely distorted someone who is there cannot recognize what has been said on the part of those who want to criticize world youth day because they want to criticize the pope and i mean that's usually the root of it i think and and everything that happens at world youth day is is attributed or or blamed on the pope and twisted in the in the worst yeah. possible way it all it all started because they tried to they took uh, bishop uh, cardinal elect aguiar's words out of uh, out of context and they did it when cardinal aguiar was uh, when his name came out as one of the future cardinals from pope so it all flows from there and from there it flowed to world youth day and world youth day had to be criticized well, and I, I, I mean, it's funny because he was, I forget the day that he was named a cardinal, but the interview that he was quoted from was like six days before he was being interviewed by a secular outlet, I believe. So he's yeah. speaking about, he's looking at it from the perspective of what can a non-Catholic expect when they go. And one of the things that people say, if you have a non-Catholic friend that you bring to a Catholic event, a lot of times when they're hesitant, they will say, are you going to try to convert me? And you know that's one. Of, and one of the responses is, "No, I'm not going to try to convert you. I just, you, you know, come if you feel comfortable. You'll be, you'll be okay." Um, and kind of going into that, um, I know that you covered. I know that Pope Francis took part in a dialogue at the Nunciature in Lisbon with a group of religious leaders from different faiths. Um, there was a press conference afterwards that you covered, I believe, with with several of yeah. them. And um, and. So maybe you can speak a little bit about that aspect and also uh, what you encountered in terms of um, non-Catholic youth or participants that were there. Did you notice any, any inter-religious uh, events going on? I know that there was a charismatic event that went on uh, simultaneously, but it wasn't really connected to, to World Youth Day. But maybe if, there, if there's anything that you can, that you can speak about that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. No, we were there. There were 17 religious leaders coming out of the nunciature. We saw a uh, Hindu leader, Buddhist, a sheikh. It is, that sheikh is actually relatively... Portugal has a very good tradition of interreligious dialogue in that regard. That sheikh, the representative of the Islam community, was one of the few... Uh, Islamic leaders that I know of that defended Benedict XVI during the controversy of the speech of Regensburg. It was actually very interesting. He wrote an article uh, to a secular newspaper saying he was taken out of context. This is not what we should not, we should not uh, pile up on him. This is not what he was trying to say. His message about 
peace among religions is valid. Of course, he could have expressed himself better, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so we have this experience. And of course, uh, Portugal was well positioned to make this uh, interreligious dialogue um, uh, a part of uh, um, a good, uh, part of World Youth Day that would come out, be highlighted. But it does not, in in the least, obscure the evangelization. The evangelization is the central point. The interreligious dialogue is something that also happens in conjunction with World Youth Day, but of course the 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 main the main activities of World Youth Day were geared towards the, its Catholic identity. And that's something that Pope Francis keeps saying. We can only enter into a dialogue with someone if we are firmly rooted in our identity, not imposing our identity, but we know who we are so that we know what we can contribute. And of, of course, those interreligious, those other religious leaders, they knew, they knew that, and they didn't mind. They were there to talk and the talk that they, the, the topic of their talk was precisely what Cardinal elect Aguiar had said in that interview. It was fraternity in light of the principles of Fratelli Tutti. All of the leaders said this was the, this was the core of Pope Francis's um, meeting with them. How to build a fraternal society with the help of other religions. And, and I, can only, I can only say that when we were at the media center, mm -hmm. that there was a volunteer there. It's a Coptic. She is a Coptic Orthodox. Yeah. She came all the way from Egypt. She was always there every day at the media center, helping the journalists. So yeah. this person it, it was not, she went there uh, to help. And yeah. And a truly ecumenical spirit, I would think, you know, I think yeah. that's, I mean, that's really what we're working towards little steps like that in recognizing, um, Christian unity and, and, and bringing us back into, into full communion. Um, and I think that one of the things that Claire, that you mentioned earlier, and that's semi-related, but not, um, but it's a different issue is, is this issue of secularization. And I know that Portugal, like basically every other country in the West, is uh, experiencing this secularization. Um, you're probably in the in the generation where uh, the young people might be culturally Catholic. Maybe their parents aren't uh, aren't practicing anymore, but their grandparents still are. Probably get baptized. Probably have first communion have some connection to the church because it's part of their identity. Um, and like Pedro said, yeah. World Youth Day or part of being part of being a missionary, part of being an evangelizer is having a strong sense of identity. Do you think that World Youth Day, especially since you've been to so many, do you think that it helps strengthen uh, the Catholic identity of young people who might be uh, turning towards other things or turning towards this the secular culture? Yeah, um, for me, okay. I'd like to add a context earlier with sure. regards to what Bishop Aguirre said, uh, we do not need to convert or we do not want to convert. My take on that is we do not impose our faith, but when we are asked, you know, through interreligious dialogue, we propose our faith if they, you know, but then, yeah. We're there to listen, but listening does not necessarily mean that um, you agree, whatever, you know. But there we find commonality and fraternity within those interreligious dialogues or even common dialogues with fellow Catholics. So, um, yeah. Excellent. And, you know, little dialogues even with, uh, with common, um, with fellow Catholics, with pilgrims, you plant little seeds and that somehow helps their faith. So actually that's what happened to me in World Youth Day, Spain, and even here in Portugal with last week. It's like my faith is renewed and strengthened. Um, uh, every time that it's like you're in a, a familial atmosphere. So that was it. 
um, one of the, uh, well, most often what the young would tell us is um, they felt alone, especially ones mm -hmm. who, um, who have strong Catholic values. They felt alone, but here in World Youth Day, they find that there are many of them that are like them. And so that's why they're so happy and very, they just enjoy. They're, they're having a great time. Um, I would see so many things I witnessed. I wish I could have written there, but I could not. Um, just passing by, they will just, they don't know each other, but they just, you know, high five yes. there. Yes. Hi, hello. It's just a, famil uh, a familial atmosphere, like a family. Everywhere you go, they sing each other, so that's it. They, they dance with each other. I remember when I was a pilgrim, one of the best things was to just create a wheel uh, of people and so many people from some different, uh, so different, many different countries would uh, just join. Uh, we we don't we didn't speak each other's language except the universal language of joy, and that's joy. one of the things that that's Francis what, yeah. said in his in his uh, speech. We have to create roots of joy. So many times. Uh, nowadays with the critics, they talk about the roots, but those there's no joy in those roots. It's always suspicion, bitterness, yeah. anger. No, here in World Youth Day, they were creating roots, cr roots of tradition, Catholic tradition, but roots of joy, roots of joy. Uh, I, I, I remember uh, I equipped with Claire, there was such a crowd uh, of young people just in Eucharistic adoration with the Holy Father. And then I equipped to her, and I know this might be controversial, I equipped to her, here are the true traditionalists. Yeah. They're, they're the tradition of being in adoration, joyful, reverent, but joyful, in communion with the Holy Father. Yeah. Here are the true traditionalists. These are fulfilling the Catholic tradition. Now, regarding the Catholic secu the secularization here in Portugal, I know that Claire also noticed that when, when we arrived here. Yeah, there, there are some that are indifferent to the fate, um, but yeah. Uh, one, of the problem, the, the, one of the problems with, in Portuguese mentality is indifferentism. Yeah. And it's an indifferentism that is religious, political, uh, in, in, uh, people just go out minding their own business. Sometimes it, it is good because we are not as polarized as the Americans in terms of po <laughs> politics, but it's also, it's, we go to the opposite extreme, okay? Yeah. So, uh, yes, it's very difficult to light, uh, set uh, the Portuguese people alight. And in this sense, I think we did it. This, this was an event. Uh, yeah, the uh, seeds have been planted. Correct, so. we, can, we have to be patient. That's what we, we went to a vocational fair uh, in which priests and religious would propose a vocation to the young people who were passing by. And they all said, we don't know if it's going to happen. I'm not expecting a boom. I know I'm planting the seed. The World Youth Day is based on this principle. There's a seed planted. I, I remember, I'm not talking about those big things that uh, sometimes the critics want. No, I'm talking about small seeds that were planted in my life. And even nowadays, sometimes when I act in a certain way, I can recall that the, the root of that came from my experience on World Youth Day. Oh, wow. It's even, even in, in aspects of personality uh, uh, that it's impressive. So the seeds have been planted. We have to be patient and only God knows how they're going to grow. We cannot see it like yeah. that, but they are there. I I know because I have lived it and many other young people we talk to yeah. have lived it as well. Yeah. It's common, it's common to Correct. all. Correct, we are the instruments and only God who changes, you know, changes the person. That's, um, I mean, that's a beautiful thought, the idea of um, we're, we're cooperators. You know, we can't convert uh, yeah. somebody. We can't yeah. make that final decision. We can, and there are different approaches that work for different people. And what we need to pray for is that we play the role in that person's life. We have the mm -hmm. encounter with that person that um, that God wants us to have. 
You know, it's not about being a salesman and selling them the car of Catholicism and telling them to hop in here are the keys. It's, it's um, ultimately it's it's up to them, and the best we can do is is show them an aspect of Catholicism or of the faith or of uh, faith in God that um, that they may not have recognized before that will resonate with them and maybe ten years down the line, you know, it's the sort of thing where we find out in heaven how we affected somebody. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So just in terms of, uh, so let's, let's talk about next one of the things that was one of the early controversies that was, you know, that was planted before the, the World Youth Day event, which was the attendance um, at the beginning. And you wrote an article about this and your prediction more than came true. Um, I don't know if the, the, Portuguese uh, government officials were ready for for uh, 1.6 million or however many it was at the uh, at the final mass. But basically, 340,000 had registered. You said early on, and this was like day one or day two, and the Pope wasn't even there yet, and the big events hadn't really happened. And by the end, um, it was 1.6 million that are estimated to have attended that final mass. Um, now. In terms of of crowd control, in terms of people coming in, I mean, I'm just like I said, I've never I've been to some papal events before. I've been when he came to when Benedict and when Francis came to the U.S. I experienced some of the crowds there, but it was nothing like um, a, a World Youth Day experience. Um, what was the experience of being part of a crowd of hundreds of thousands or over a million people? Um, how uh, how were the accommodations such as they were? How did most of the, I know that people slept out on the uh, on the lawn before the final mass on Saturday night. And that was when um, the priest DJ came out and played techno music, mm -hmm. which apparently I was told by one of the organizers uh, earlier this week that every World Youth Day wakes up the young people with techno music before the final mass. Um, and just for whatever reason, this was um, turned into a controversy. Um, I know that there were concerns about the handling of the Blessed Sacrament um, in terms of, I guess, the ciboriums that were used and where, uh, you know, where it was, um, I guess, the tabernacle or the place of repose of the, uh, you know, of the Blessed Sacrament. What were your thoughts, I guess, in general about sort of the the organization, the logistics, the reverence, the accommodations, the, you know, were there enough bathrooms? I, just, just to give a general idea of what, of what your experience was. Well, for my own, well, we have our own, actually, we have our own accommodation, which is very near to uh, Eduardo Park. So um, we didn't experience, but when I was in Madrid, it's, we, we would sleep in gyms, so that kind of experience. So uh, because of the being part of media course, we decided that we would be uh, independent and have our own accommodation. That was a smart idea. <laughs> and for your own sanity, probably, too. Yeah, we actually have to be early because there are yeah. certain briefings that are very early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's... Uh, yeah, and I just want to say that uh, sleeping sleepover from Saturday to Sunday that happens in every World Youth Day. Yeah. Every World Youth Day. Yeah. So there's a papal vigil. The Pope is there on Saturday night. There's a Eucharistic adoration. And then the young people stay there uh, celebrating, um, talking, whatnot. And then they sleep over. Yeah. And papal mass is just there the following day, early in the morning, of course, you have to wake up all these people. How are you going to wake them up? You have the sound system already to broadcast the mass. Why not use that? Why not use music? That that's obvious. That's an obvious solution. And this is not something that happened just now. It happens every World Youth Day. This vigil, this sleepover, is a part of the tradition of World Youth Day. Now, um, of course. Compared with Rio, it's complete. It's it's completely different because Rio was in Copacabana Beach, 
<laughs> that's a sleepover. Yeah. <laughs> but for example, compared to Krakow, I think it was better organized than Krakow. The crowd, the crowd control was also better than Krakow. Rio was also very good, uh, but at least uh, uh, I didn't feel like the, the, there was um, very great congestion or like sometimes in Krakow, I felt like the people went to these funnels of crowd and sometimes they they lost, they got lost from it, groups got separated, people sometimes were very, very crowded and yeah. could, people felt like very squeezed. I didn't feel like that here in, in Portugal, even though of, we left earlier, we were in the in the media pool, so that can, that can have uh, had a, an impact. But yeah. Yeah, I think it was well controlled in terms of crowd control. And although there's a bit of inconvenience where when you would get the food, it's far, but maybe that's part of crowd control so that people will not be entering all at the same time. So uh, that's my well, the idea is one of the one of the bad things that we can tell about the organization is that of course uh, the food could have been distributed closer each each people could each yeah. person could have you know it, we received we received a bag of food okay and could have been distributed closer but other than that I think yeah. I think that in general the organization was was good it was better organized of course mm -hmm. i think even in my experience yeah. even pope francis himself said that it's the best organized uh, world you think he ever attended. yeah so, i believe so rio was also very well organized i don't think there's opinion. a perfect organized world you day there's always going to there's be always some, there's the logistics I mean, logistics. if you have an organ uh if you organize uh, i've attended several organize you know gatherings even like a hundred but you have 1.5 million don't expect to go smoothly with that i mean yeah and that that, that brings us to the, the situation of the crowd I, I knew when people were saying oh this is going to be the least well attended world if they I, I i knew this is this was not true because they were counting the people who were registered on the first day when we arrived mm -hmm. the first thing that we did was check in so, but this was the first day. There were still many people all around Portugal, people still arriving. Yeah. And of course they, they would not check in right in the first day. And they were comparing the number of check-ins in the first day with the mass attendance of other world youth days. Of course, yeah. the, this proportion was, the proportion does, it didn't make any sense, this comparison. We knew, we went there to check in. We were on. We were just on the first day. Many people are still arriving. Many people were visiting other parts, Fatima, other parts of Portugal. So the, that comparison did not make sense. The uh, the predictions of the authorities were based on projections or that they knew about from from the from, from the from the border control. So of course now, of course you can say, oh. World Youth Day in Rio had many more millions, and this was just 1.5 million. Well, Portugal is a small country. At this moment, at that moment, we are just 10 million in population. So at that moment, for each 10 Portuguese people that exist in the that were in the country, one was a one per there was one pilgrim. Now imagine if it was three million or five million. We could not accommodate that. We are a small country, okay? Small population. Yeah. The entire population of Portugal, 11 or 10, is just the population of Manila alone. Metro Manila. There are as many people in the capital city of the Philippines, where Claire hails from, Manila, yeah. as in the whole the country of Portugal. So it's a, it's relative when you say big or yeah. huge. Or and even so, Portugal is already accustomed to receiving international events. Even though we're small, that's yeah. something that we like to do to host these kinds of things. And this was the biggest one that we ever had. So so uh, just to go back to the, I guess the Eucharistic reverence or, uh, you know, these are, it's funny because they have these pictures from almost every papal event and they've been doing that for 20 years. Um, 
the the <laughs> website the website tradition in action it's funny tradition in action.com um they were like the first ones on the internet doing the rad trad um you know showing the the people in Paul the 6th um audience hall like acrobats and dancers mm -hmm. and, and you know in front of John Paul the 2nd in you know and and it's funny because now in the internet era or in the social media era with Pope Francis they're acting like all of these things are are new or you know are are spectacular now i don't want to downplay irreverence or abuses but did um I, since you were close to the to the to the media pool and i'm sure this the discussions i guess came up about the ciboriums about the reservation of the blessed sacrament um did you have any impressions that there were mistakes made or that they could have done these things better or that not enough care was taken um it seems that these that the blessed sacrament was at least sort of put into tents and put you know it was lit and there were people praying like it was almost like a chapel even if it wasn't the most sightly do you have any thoughts about that or is that something you didn't really look into um well i'll go yeah, ahead yeah. here so um there were tents need uh near the media pool but i never saw anything like that sometimes i would see like an open tent and there were like bags in it so and then there are volunteers but there's nothing like boxes so i don't know where they were at during at that time so and we didn't really you know investigated it because we didn't notice it in okay. the tents that were nearby but then we didn't stay in just the media pool we actually go from a1 a2 a3 a10 in several sectors in yes. several sectors so uh we saw and we passed by these tents and we didn't see it so that's oh. why we were wondering okay there's something like this how come we didn't see it yeah i mean it, it might was, have been they got the picture was, of the one case or something like that yeah yeah well, uh, it's also from our investigation it was not meant for adoration Correct. it was just meant to be there to be reserved there okay Correct. and no matter how much people say oh it could be better well it, on this situation bringing the uh, enough eucharist for 1.5 million people uh to be reserved uh, throughout the night overnight of course uh, it it is not you cannot do it as if you are in a, in a ch in a church or in a chapel some some concessions have to be made but for logistics purposes even to protect the blessed sacrament because there was the there was dust there was uh, yeah. this was an open field okay so they did the best they could during the, yeah. their circumstances it cannot be as perfect as in a church yeah. but it is the best that can be done with the logistics and it was not meant for adoration the adoration was something that happened yeah. afterwards when people started to get curious but as we we yeah. didn't we just saw the tents right. and we didn't we didn't see it we didn't notice it because the tents were closed yeah. okay. the tents were closed so um, were, it was pre-consecrated hosts i guess that yes that they were, were pre before the mass for the next day is what Actually, oh, and then i have to add on that so of course we always refer to the app so in the video here uh you would see that there's adoration and it's the only one that uh, mentioned that this is the only session adoration the adoration with the holy father with was the, the only adoration, adoration that is scheduled on the app it nowhere did it says that you, there are adoration here and there in this sense it doesn't say that. those adorations that you saw were adorations that happened uh because when? people started to get curious and then they knew ah oh, the the volunteers so okay the lord is there oh and they started adoring and just from that you can see that these are not irreverent young people. These are not irreverent young people. Just like the ones that were outside, eventually dancing or singing, were not irreverent. They didn't know what was in those tents, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, the, as soon as they knew, oh, the, our Lord is there, they started adoring. This is not irreverence. Yeah. During the Eucharistic adoration with the Pope the day before, the Pope that the, this was with the young people, he put the monstrance, and suddenly 1.5 million people completely quiet 
Yeah. Completely quiet. You cannot. You could hear anything. Yeah. Yeah. You could hear a pin fall if if you are not in an open field. Okay. And uh, the yeah. pin doesn't make a sound in the dirt. But still, uh, you could. It's impressive. Yeah. One point five million people, completely silent, turn towards the blessed sacrament. That's the most extraordinary. It's extraordinary. How can people say that these young people are irreverent towards the Eucharist, so that they don't know the value of the Eucharist, yeah. the, the the real presence? What we saw is was not people who don't know the real presence. Yeah. So um, we're yeah. running out of. Or we're getting towards the end, so I want to ask the big question, obviously, that we haven't talked about yet. Pope Francis, um, he so he arrives on Saturday. Is that when he arrived at, at World Youth Day? And um, obviously has his adoration. Um, just first of all, how close did you get? How did he look? Did he seem in good spirits with, you know, did his health seem like it was doing well. Um, how did his message uh, touch the people? And um, just, I guess, whatever you can say about the, the Holy Father's time with the young people at this World Youth Day. Well, I would say definitely he was very well received. And when I first saw him, when I first saw him, it's like, uh, I don't know where he gets the grace, you know, he has several sicknesses, but I know that God is, you know, helping him because he seemed very joyous. And there's even a picture of him and the president of Portugal laughing with each other. So he's very excited. And even very, when he makes his speeches, his messages, you could tell very strong. You know, he would remember he yeah. said, though, though a bit tired still, yeah. of, course. of course, we felt yeah. that, that he was tired, but still strong. The for schedule, the, the schedule, the, yeah, the schedule of activities was very intense. I was yeah. actually telling him that don't this schedule is very intense for him, it's, but it was too much. It's, yeah. We were like, I, I was worried actually, yeah. but, because it, it's not that he arrives on Saturday, he arrived before, he arrived since the beginning, okay. but. First, the first time that he was with, he arrived, I think, on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, oh, and he, he only had first contact with the pilgrims the next day. Then there was uh, uh, as a Via Cruz, uh, Via Cruces, and then uh, the the. He no, met first with the the, the authorities, the bishops, also some victims of sexual abuse as well. So yeah, he had a very tight schedule, but he was there throughout the World Youth Day and he was with young people throughout the World Youth Day. And when he arrived, the first time that he arrived, I remember it was very received. The thing that echoed throughout all World Youth Day was when he said, everyone, 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 everyone. that echoed through the field, that echoed through the park and everyone was repeating the same thing. They were absorbing his, his wisdom. They were his, cheering. They yeah. were cheering. And of course, the common refrain that happens in all World Youth Days and this time was no different. Esta es la juventud del Papa. This is the youth of, of the Pope. Pope. They were singing it, they were chanting it constantly. Uh, many million uh, thousands of of, yeah. uh, of young people singing that this is the youth of the, the pope. pope this is the youth of the pope now so you cannot you cannot say that this yeah. is the, this uh, youth was lukewarm it's like uh, yeah i feel like we're in a, a sea of graces at that time mm -hmm. it's like uh you can uh, you can feel it. I, I still cannot believe. For example, last week I was saying, I can't believe that one week that has already passed seven days since that time. I cannot believe it. it seems unreal. It seems like we were transported out of time and space for a time, and that it it doesn't like, feel like it, it. It seems like it was yesterday, sincerely. Yeah. Even yeah. though it has already been one week, it's impressive. It stays with you. It stays yeah. with you. Yeah, I wonder yeah, if on the other I wonder if any of young the young people from you know from like North America or from um the English speaking countries that or you know that have that more cynical attitude towards Pope Francis, which is which is pervasive. Um I mean I just got a letter from a seminarian who uh was residing with other seminarians over the summer and 
in the US and basically was saying that every every lunch break was a Pope bashing session. Um, you know, I wonder if some of the American youths and, and people from, um, you know, th these circles that don't, uh, that just are so cynical and so, so negative towards the Pope, I wonder if they even transformed a little bit um, or tremendously from the experience, to, just to draw from other countries, from the youth of other countries and the universal church and to see that the Pope is a father that he is you know our shepherd right now i wonder if i mean i don't know that how close you got to the uh, american cynicism you know uh, no none none at all the, the americans were the fourth or fifth more uh, largest group of pilgrims uh, so spanish portuguese italians uh, and then americans top four or top five and Cecilia, we went into the field to interview and we decided that we had to interview some Americans. There was absolutely no, at least that they would told us, no anti-papal bias at all. We interviewed a group of Texans in, uh, in the vigil during that vigil. Twice. We randomly select Americans with a flag yeah. and they turn out to be And they, uh, they all said, oh, yeah, Pope Francis, this is, uh, we asked him, this is the youth of the Pope? Absolutely, absolutely. There was no bad word from them on Pope Francis. Two Texan groups, um, no, uh, the, uh, we didn't feel that cynicism anywhere uh, on World Youth Day, even among the Americans that were actually there. Well, that's encouraging. I mean, I, I guess it's, I mean, I know it's obviously it's real among the clergy and among, you know, within the seminaries and in certain Catholic circles in the U.S. But um, hopefully that cynicism hasn't passed down to, to the young Catholics. And it's just good to see that enthusiasm, because, um, as you know, there aren't many of us that are defending the Pope, you know, to that to that crowd. Um, so uh, and how close did you get to him? That was that was one of the things that I, I was curious to ask. Did you have any privilege? Did he roll through the, the press office and wave to everybody or anything like that? Or you were, uh, you know, a well, just uh, twice, I think twice when he was passing by. They put they made the itinerary of the Pope Mobile pass in front of the media pool so that the media could photograph him better. Oh, okay. That was yeah. the closest that we got from him. And did, you didn't wave and say, hey, remember me? I'm friends with Austin or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I think uh, we already have met him before. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Give, give the opportunity to the, the, to the uh, yeah, young yeah. people who have not met him at all. There yeah. were so many that were there for the first time and that had never been so close to the Pope. Oh, yeah. 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 And I, I mean, I had the opportunity last year, too. But, it's, yeah, I don't know that being part of a big crowd is is... I mean, being part of a big crowd when the Pope is there and when it's your first time seeing the Pope, because the first time I saw John Paul II, it was electric seeing him in person. But um, yeah, you're, I mean, it's, you're not going to have a chance to, to, you know, get up super close at these kinds of things. Um, so I don't know if there are any other reflections that you guys have that you wanted to share about World Youth Day before we do the, the little closing plugs and, and farewell. Um, I don't know any thoughts, Claire, on uh, just on what this experience meant to you. Maybe talk more about the pilgrim side. Um, what were you reassured about? What graces specifically do you think the Holy Spirit um, was working in you? Any anything like that? Strengthen oh, your that marriage with that. Pedro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just strengthening my faith, renewed my faith. And I remember the my missionary call, whatever it is, whatever talents that I have, I will try my best to help. So if he calls me to keep, you know, continue writing with my husband in terms of journalism, I will do so. So I feel like it's this is it because I was this is my first taste with my husband. So um, we got tired, but I was very really happy. So it's a service. So what can I do for the church? And this is it. So um, experience it, uh, experiencing it with my husband, uh, it's just, uh, it's amazing. 
and seeing the the youth, uh, I feel like I'm. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm one of them as well. That you know, the fate uh, is alive and it just influences me here. That's right. And Pedro, any thoughts from you? Well, as I said, it was unreal as usually World Youth Day is. At uh, this moment, I do believe that there were things that touched me the, when Pope said everyone, everyone, everyone. Yeah. When the Pope said the only time when you look, you can, when it's permissible to look down on someone is when you're helping them ri rise up. Uh, and uh, that vigil, the sunset was amazing. The, with, and they had some drones scribbling the message of the Pope in the sky. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah. it was, it was it, of course, it's, an un, it's unreal. But just like with Rio, I know that in my life, it, there's a pre-Rio and a post-Rio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that this is also going to happen here. But the seeds are there. Let's see where they bring, how they grow. Let's see how they develop. It's still early to say, but let's let God surprise us. Excellent. The God of surprises. Um, yeah. So, well, thank you for joining me. Um, why don't you share a little bit about uh, the city and the world and how people some, can subscribe? And I don't know how many articles you wrote about World Youth Day that are there. Um, you can also find them on wherepeteris.com, and I'll make sure that where Peter is has all of them by the time by the time this is posted, but um, and it'll link back to to the city and the world. But why don't you share a little bit about that project? Sure. Okay, the city and the world is uh, our, as you said, our journalistic project. We mm -hmm. are trying to provide good, credible coverage of these events, and we try precisely to also respond to these controversies in a timely manner. Being have actually having been there. Uh, so you can access those articles by going to the city and the world com, and uh, that and uh, reading what we wrote, you also will publish it, as you said, and there will also be links there. So they can follow us on our page, the on our Facebook page, the Twitter, the Twitter, page. Twitter page, or X page, or whatever. That's not used. And I'm always sure to put the you know, where the link so that they can subscribe for every new post. I know you guys have a Patreon. So um, yeah, thank you for, for the great work that you do there. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, for those of you who are who are watching, please, uh, you know, sub click, subscribe, like this, like this podcast, uh, go to city in the world, the city and the world.com go to where Peter is.com subscribe to both websites. We're both working together to help support the church, support the magisterium. Um, it's a collaboration. Um, you know, we're all in the vineyard. <laughs> and um, and yeah, and definitely try to, if, if you're able uh, to help us either site out, we both have Patreon pages that are linked on our websites. So uh, we would appreciate that. And Pedro, update on your book. Uh, yes, uh, I have uh, published, uh, I have already published last year, you were there, uh, on the launch, <laughs> um, my book, The Orthodoxy of Amoris Letizia, which uh, has um, won the first place in the Pope Francis category of the Catholic Media Association Awards. Uh, so that's uh, one, it explain, tries to con counter the arguments that say that Amor's Letizia is heretical or heterodox. And now, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, very soon, we will also launch, I'm also going to launch the, the book Heresy Disguised as Tradition. So be on the look for that one. It's also very interesting, which is precisely to uh, try to uh, tackle the issue that we see on so many traditionalists so if you perceive that the Pope is going against tradition, uh, they say, oh, if you perceive that the Pope is going against tradition, then you are free to just reject what he's saying. You, you can just go on your own as long as the Pope, as long as and you go with your own perception of tradition. And that book shows the historical precedent for that. Uh, and it's not very good. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's the overarching ideology that is, um, 
at least from the right that is opposed to uh, Pope Francis and really the entire uh, church since before the Second Vatican Council, I would almost say, since the First Vatican Council. So anyway, uh, thank you once again, everyone. Uh, thank you to Claire and Pedro for joining me. Um, please, uh, the links, we will have links in the description uh, below. And uh, thank you for joining us. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you for having us. Thank you God for having bless. us. God bless. I'm clicking the end. I'll chop off this. End recording. So. <laughs>